And we're live! Welcome to yet another edition of PCS Q&A, Coronavirus Edition. I'm your host, MJ Boyce. I am the Director of Community Outreach at PCS Grades. And of course, as always, we have our resident BA, PCS Reform Advocate, Megan Harless. Um, before we get to her and our special guests, I'm going to go over our housekeeping items as we do every week. First and foremost, ask the questions. If you have a question, go ahead and put them in the comments below and we will answer it because we are here to answer your questions. If we don't know the answer, guess what? We know who does. And if we don't know either of those things, we're going to take that question for action and we're going to get back to you with an answer. I promise. Um, that's number one. And that being said, we bring these subject matter experts on and anything from education to transcom to movers. We do all of that. We bring the subject matter experts to you so that you can ask questions and get the answers that you need in this PCS process, okay? Here's the deal though. Sometimes you're gonna have those specific situations that we may not know the answer to. We're gonna do everything we can, but for those specific situations and your specific decision-making um, abilities, what you need to do is go to your two overall forever and always resources. The end all be all resources are your local chain of command and your local transportation office. Those are the people who know you. Those are the people who are dealing with your stuff. Those are the people who are dealing with your lives. So those are the people you need to go to because they are the ones that can impact the change the most. That being said, last thing on my list is yes, we have an uptick in these coronavirus cases. Yes, we're seeing it across the South, but at the same time, you know, is the stop move going to be lifted? What's happening? But I'm telling you right now, everyone do your part. We've been doing our part. We've been good at it. We need to flatten that curve and we're going to flatten Murphy with it. Write it down, Murphy. <laughs> we're coming for you. Flatten the curve. Flatten Murphy. Hashtag. Yes. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Megan for those DOD updates. Megan? Hey, everybody. So just a couple of updates that we have for you this week. We are still in the conditions-based phased opening. So with that, your installation, your, both your losing and your gaining installation have to be listed in green status, unrestricted, in order to be able to PCS freely. If either of them are listed as a restricted status, you still need to have an exception to policy uh, in order to PCS. My guidance has just been, if you have PCS orders, go ahead and start working on that exception to policy. As anything can change, you may need it down the road as it gets closer to your time to go. So just go ahead, work on that exception to policy, get it out of the way and have it so that way you can be able to move. The second thing, the health protection guidance that's come down from the DOD about your movers, your packers, your crews that are in your home, that they should be wearing face masks, they should be sanitizing surfaces that are frequently touched um, as they go along and packing your home. Uh, it, it's not an optional thing, it's a requirement. And it's not just you know for their protection or your protection, but it's a force protection uh, guidance thing. So it's it's a way to keep our, our service members safe. So that way, should something happen and we need our military to step up, they're healthy enough to be able to do it. So we've heard a lot about, you know, people coming in, not having masks, crews saying, you know, well, I'm not wearing it, walking off the job. If you have those issues, call your move coordinator. They should be able to step in and assist you. If you can't get a hold of them, your local transportation office is another good place to go to get a hold of somebody to be able to get those situations rectified. The last thing I've got for you, um, a big topic, especially those going Oconus, is about passports. So no fee passports are currently running about two to four weeks. I've seen some people getting them a little bit faster. They've got things in place there to be able to get your no fee passports in time. As far as your tourist passports, a lot of those are getting held up and uh, getting delayed and getting to the actual person. A lot of that, uh, we uh, dropped the links there in the comments for you. Um, it all depends on where, what center your, your application had to go to. So they're starting to open up their passport centers in a phased opening condition as well. So depending on where your passport application went to, that center might have been closed or it might have been open. So you might have seen people that submitted after you getting their passports before you. So take a look at their website, check out their guidance, how they're opening up, and that'll give you some more information as to uh, when to expect your passports coming for your OCONUS assignments. So that's all I've got right now and back to MJ. Thanks for those updates, Megan. Um, yes, of course, everything is the crazy a little bit, um, but I like that Megan keeps us grounded, which is great because mm -hmm. the more knowledge we have, the better we feel. At least that's the way I am. I don't know about y'all. 
So I'm really excited about today, by the way. I am really excited to be talking to these two amazing women. And here's why. Because not only are they military spouses like us, they're also prior service army veterans. Oh, by the way, they are the type of mill spouse I love the most, which are the type that put the money where their mouths are, which is awesome because they saw a problem with the PCS process having lived it on both sides of the gate. And they decided to just, you know what? Let's do this. And they're going to tell us a little bit about how that happened. But before they do, I would love for both you, Wendy and Isabel, to go ahead and introduce yourself. Wendy, let's go ahead and start with you. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Wendy Way. Thank you, PCS grades. Thank you, MJ. And thank you, Megan, for being trailblazers. So Isabel and I can easily just walk this path and, and, and start this business. But again, my name is Wendy Way. I'm a former Army officer as well as a military spouse. I've been doing this gig now for about 18 years and love our military community. I mean, this is, this is where I've grown up. Um, and it has actually, as, as stressful as it feels sometimes, it has provided me a wonderful and varied career. I like to call my career a jungle gym. Uh, that's because with each military move, on average every two, maybe three years, uh, I reinvent myself, right? I, I go and do something from conflict management to HR work, to managing training programs, to managing a large maintenance contract. So we as military spouses, are we have grit, we have determination, and, and we we and and we always are reinventing ourselves. So that leads to today and our last move when we moved to the DC area. I said, I've always had this entrepreneurial itch. I met the right partner, Isabel, and said, let's give it a go. So here we are today, and we're getting this business going, starting with packing, lots of mill moves, and um, we want to make a difference. We are problem solvers, just like MJ said. And so we are so excited to be here. Shout out to my girls. I'm a mom of five girls, 21 to one. So oh, they're busy there as well, too. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. No, oh, but last time I was for her with the prize, oh. NTC surprise, the desert, you know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Surprise babies are good. I'm a surprise baby, too. We like to shake it up and move stuff. So, you know, she's my favorite already. Uh. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, Isabel, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Isabel Garcia Schmidt. Uh, like, Wendy covered most of uh, most of a little bit of that, that backstory into how we got to where we are. But um, former Army officer, married into the military, um, got out. Met an amazing human being uh, that I'm that I'm married to today. We have two kids, 13 and 11. I'm, we're presently stationed in South Korea. This is our second time here. We've done four overseas moves. So when you talk about someone who knows about non-temp storage and um, how it is that you're going to pack for overseas moves in terms of separating your unaccompanied baggage and things like that, I have a lot of experience. Uh, I have 11 moves. Um, <clears throat> with Peter, one, one, two of those, I guess, were on my own, right, when I was in the military. But um, Wendy touched on the community. Um, MJ, you touched on it too. Vetrepreneurs, right? We knew when we reconnected at Fort Irwin that we wanted to do something that plugged us into the community. Um, and that's how we arrived at today. So we're excited. And um, I think that there are a lot of really great things on the horizon, and that has to do with people in the community, MJ, you said it, getting involved and doing the things that they see need all of those changes, you know, executing whatever changes need to happen, getting on the ground and doing that themselves. I'm a, I'm a fan of, of getting on the ground and, uh, and getting things done. So I appreciate you too. I appreciate what you're doing. Um, I appreciate you carving the path that makes it easy for entrepreneurs or for um, gals looking to get plugged in somewhere to find niche markets. So thank you for that. Oh, wow. Well, that's a bonus. Nobody's ever thanked me for stuff like that before. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you guys both kind of, um, kind of delved into um, this during your introductions, but let, let's go a, a little bit further than that. So can you tell us, um, 
let's go with um, Isabel. Can you tell us a little bit about Logza Mill Moves and like the motivation behind wanting to create this company? And I mean, I I mean, what was that conversation like? Did that just come out of nowhere? Like, hey, you two, okay, let's do this. Like, how did that happen? Uh, a little bit of that, I think. Um, I'm going to take you back about 20 years to when Wendy and I met. We met uh, through ROTC. We were cadets at Advance Camp. Um, it was a, a fantastic opportunity for gals like us who were already, um, you know, a little further along in college when we did, when we get recruited um, to get plugged in to the to the military. <clears throat> we meet. Um, we have a great time. We become army officers. We go our separate ways, and then we reconnect at Irwin. And Wendy's managing a large maintenance contract at Irwin. And I think the, the beginning of Logs and Mill Moves was really understanding that collaborations can work so long as the two entities completely agree to a particular vision. And I think that that's the really fantastic thing about Logs and Mill Moves is that um, in my bio I mentioned that I really do like being the Sam Wise to Wendy's Frodo, uh, because different you know collaborations, all collaborations are, are different, right? And um, I'm a leader as well. But when it comes to this particular business entity, um, I really like partnering with Wendy. Wendy has a passion for logistics and leading and leaning. She's a Lean Six Sigma black belt. I have a passion for operations, being on the ground, problem solving, and people. I really do love to talk. Um, I've, got, I've got some vocal cord stuff going on in my life right now. Um, but I have worked as a motivational speaker. Um, and when we when we reconnected, we figured out very quickly that um, that this was an incredible partnership. Um, we are going to be able to collaborate really well. And so we started to brainstorm. We knew working on a subcontract out at Irwin that um, there are opportunities to increase other opportunities for military spouses and for vets. And that that's in terms of employment. Um, and at the same time, elevate your community, the community that you live in. We are not a very large community. We seem large when we're amongst ourselves, but we aren't. And so working through those two things, um, the brainstorming starts happening. I was leaning more towards housing, um, maintenance, contracting, and housing. <clears throat> Wendy calls one day and she says, I've got it. Um, the global housing contract will be awarded. There is a niche market there. We can help the community that's already existing, and those are the local agents, those are other transportation service providers, um, because we can be the bridge between the mill spouse on the ground, the end user, the, the soldier, um, and those agents, and those contractors, and those transportation service providers, or now the one, right? Um, it was a fantastic idea. We already knew we wanted to collaborate, and so it just, it, it just worked out perfectly for us. That is, that is, okay, and can you just really quick, I'm just gonna throw this in there, um, LOGSA Mill Moves, can you can you explain to me what LOGSA stands for? Oh, absolutely, yeah, I'm sorry. So LOGSA is Logistics Support Allies, and then the Mill Moves portion is really the first of a series of um, other entities that we wanna create within the company. So Wendy and I have a passion for creating those opportunities and for problem solving. And we know that there are myriad spouses out there who are ready to do things, anything that helps to solve a problem within our own community. Why not cycle that stuff within ourselves? Because we've seen it, because we're empathetic to those things. Um, so that's that's what Logistics Support Allies is, LOGSA. Um, but we wanna later get into, we want to get into um, quality assurance, right? We want to get into customer service and those kinds of things are going to happen later. We do still want to get into military housing, but um, you, everybody starts somewhere and we're starting with logs and mill moves. This was something that um, is at the forefront of, you know, the host of, of issues that we see, things that we can improve for our military families. And so we went with logs and mill moves. Love it. Yes, absolutely. Like I, I love hearing that story about how you two came back together and were able to collaborate to make this this journey happen and to make this difference. So, how does then does LogSA's operating practices um, differ from the other moving companies that we experience on the regular? And why should a military family want to have your company over another company that they could be assigned? Yeah. So. 
we have actually been really fortunate to be hooked up with a consultant who's done great things in the moving industry, who's introduced us to agents that are on the ground, to drivers, to other folks that are really trying to impact and elevate the industry. So we've we've met with a variety of different folks. And so while I don't know about their operating practices per se, I have my ideas, but of course I haven't been in there like I want to be. But um, I do know where they're asking for assistance and I do know where um, they're giving us feedback to what exactly they want um, and how we can help them because uh, we are building a model right now that does not presently exist because we're leveraging our own military community and we're building it in a way for this for the season in particular, but but like Isabel said, we have big plans for the future. But the industry right now, it desperately, desperately needs help during the peak moving season. They know this. Um, we know this. We feel it. We feel it by who comes into our homes that aren't trained. Um, and partly, I think this is on. It's on Transcom. It's it's how they have the, the moves set up. Right. Um, everything happens during the peak moving season. The rest of the season is down. So this is where we come into play um, and support that sheer volume. So these agents on the ground, for example, we've been talking and working with uh, Nielsen Van and Storage out of Columbia, South Carolina. And, and, and they recognize this and they need they need help just to sort of port that sheer volume. So they these agents, they black out, right? Because they get scheduled, they black out. So they can't support any additional moves or they go quick and find somebody, right? Because they have to make it happen. Well, we're that somebody. We're that somebody when they black out. And our folks are going to be trained and they're going to be ready. So some of the, some of the things that they talked about that they need are that relationship building, bringing military spouses and veterans into the homes. We can see through their lens, right? We can see stressful situation. Other folks that haven't been in those shoes can as well, right? But here's where we go a step further as that we can be empathetic because we have been in those shoes. We have felt that stress. Mm -hmm. We know what it's like to have little kids running around and, and maybe not feel as comfortable in the home um, with you don't know who's coming in. So with that and having male spouses in the homes, not only are we building relationships, we're building emotional connection, right? Because they 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 know that we understand. We, they know that we've been there. And having folks like Nielsen bringing us in is smart on their part, right? Because that helps build their reputation. Another thing they're looking for is communication. It's lacking. Um, I mean, you'll sit in the home and you know it's pack day, right? Where's my movers? Where's my movers? <laughs> I cannot even tell you. There's not been one time that that has not happened. Right? <laughs> We, since we get it, we're going to be on the phone with them. We're going to be like, we're here. We're here at nine o'clock. We're bringing this many people. Here's who you can expect to have in your home. We're not going to leave them in the dark because we get it. Quality, right? That's an issue during peak move season. So we have intentionally become members of the American Moving and Storage Association. Um, so we are training in alignment with AMSA standards. Um, and then not only that, Isabel has been doing an excellent job and building additional training and things like emotional intelligence and communication, ethics, like all those things. And then also we're going to be doing on the job training with our folks um, to actually go into homes and, and get that hands on experience. And then lastly, the huge, huge thing is access. I mean, I have a quick story of being in, at Fort Irwin and guess what? My household goods were delayed by a day. Why? Because the mover had a warrant for the, his arrest. Come oh on. my God, that, are you serious? That it will not happen with our folks. Our folks have base access. Our folks will have background checks. Our folks will not be background checked just once. This will be continual. Mm -hmm. um, so those are a few of the things that, that we are offering. I'm not sure if it's, it's essentially differing. Maybe it is, but we're definitely going to be complementing the moving industry and helping to elevate them. And these are things that they have spoken to us about that, that they want assistance in and they see the power in what we're doing. Awesome. Okay. So you brought up, this is, uh, first of all, mind blown about the whole dude was arrested. That really sucks. Um, wow. 
tell you MJ from all the families I've, seen, I've got some good stories I can tell you about. oh man see this is okay just just an <laughs> offline thing here's the thing guys I think that if we all like each military spouse that's on the planet right now took one story one of their like best tell-all hilarious you wouldn't believe it you had to be their stories I am telling you it would make the bestseller list in the New York Times <laughs> write it down <laughs> That's our lives, man. We cannot make this stuff up. <laughs> um, okay, so we talked a little bit about standards, and so so tell me, tell me how how um, getting into this moving industry and seeing how things are handled. Like, what new standard are you kind of trying to bring to the table? Like, how do you plan on shaking things up in this industry? Um, yeah, so I think. If, if I can take this one, um, Megan is, has been advocating for this, right? Megan is, has been leading the charge. Um, the issue with, with the moving industry, and, and this is why they're moving to a single source, um, is that there really is no, well, there is a minimum standard, right? But when we talk about courses in emotional intelligence or communication, or even ensuring that there's this background, this minimum for a background check, you know, those things weren't happening. The industry has tried over the last few years to, to meet that demand, right? That demand for an increase in the quality. Um, and that's where Wendy's correct, you know, strategically partnering with these agents who are on the ground, the ones who are thirsty for the model that we're presenting them um, is where we're, we're going to be successful. They have a thirst for what it is we're providing because the main issue during the peak moving season is, um, basically the warm body that's going to come in, they run out of individuals. So we know that moving happens year round. It doesn't only happen in the summertime. It doesn't only happen for a winter move cycle. It's happening for these agents on the ground um, throughout the year. Those agents um, keep on yearly employees, but when they hit their peak season, they do need to add to their capacity. And they do that through contractors. Um, a lot of contractors are excellent owner operator contractors. They've been working with agents for years. Um, they're great folks. Some people have incredible moving experiences, um, but at the end of the day, you run out of those folks. And so what we do in terms of, you know, to use the phrase again, in terms of bridging that gap is we're providing them a previously untapped resource and that's the male spouse. And that resource comes with two things. Um, typically, and a lot of spouses, we all know because I'm sure we've all volunteered, are coming with background checks. Um, they're going, we're going to give an additional background check, one that is an industry standard at this point, um, but they're also coming with base access. So that's one of the things that becomes difficult for local agents on the ground to manage because every installation is different. The, the way that you get on Fort Irwin or the requirements to get on to Fort Irwin are different than the requirements to get on to Fort Hood. But a male spouse with a male ID or a retiree or a, or a, a veteran that's, uh, that's presently working another part-time job um, on the installation has that kind of access. So we're able to provide them two things that they want off the bat, bodies and access. And so they're incredibly excited. Wendy mentioned um, Nilsa Van and Storage, Nilsen, pardon me, Van and Storage. They are excited to partner with us because we can help increase their capacity. So Wendy talks about the blackouts. Um, essentially, we're partnering with these, um, with these, these agents so that they can take on additional moves that they would have had to turn away anyway. So it's almost like a win-win situation. We get to grow a company, we get to hire male spouses, we get to hire veterans, we get to help solve a problem, and we also get to help those agents on the ground who are really working hard to, as Wendy said, elevate the industry. So that's, that's essentially the difference, um, but it is about increasing that peak moving capacity and making sure that those increases during the peak, you know, 45,000 moves a month, um, that we are feeding into that with quality personnel and with training. Um, the other thing that is that is a, a difference is that laser focus on training and on screening personnel. We're working with LaborNet. LaborNet is something that has come up because of the need for a universal background check, something that um, team members, owner operators, leads, drivers can use to find labor. We're partnering with LaborNet as well to make sure that our folks are are screened in a way that's going to allow them that additional access to any additional installations. Um, so I, and I think Wendy will cover on a couple other things maybe later, um, but, but just in case we miss them, one of the beautiful things about how we are operating as well for those agents is that um, we can train with them and then our individuals will move 
and continue to take that experience to additional uh, to additional installations and create additional opportunities there. Yeah, so that, I absolutely love what you guys, the, the shaking it up, how you guys are going about, you know, attacking this this issue and, and making such a change in it. One of the things that you talked about, you know, is that you are focused on hiring military spouses, hiring veterans in the community. So why, uh, you know, this demographic, why is it important to have, uh, you know, people from the community doing the job for the families? That's, that's a really good question. And I have, for any budding entrepreneurs out there, use your small business development center. I'm working with a great gentleman who's a former Navy captain out there and Exxon exec and now teaches entrepreneurship at George Mason University. Um, he goes by coach if he's out there. But anyways, he said, it's, it's your secret sauce, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm putting it out there though, military spouses and veterans, that's our secret sauce to this whole component. Um, and this is our community. So what better way to elevate the moving industry than utilizing those folks, as you say, that are operating in it, right? We, mm -hmm. we, we get it. Actually, it's, it's been kind of an interesting evolution of, I'm kind of going off topic, but, in, but. Um, no, no, that is, let me just go ahead and throw this out there. That is absolutely allowed here. You know, that can take <laughs> back in. It's totally fine. Yeah. We're just going from the south side. Like, it's like the pack in my trash, the pack doing this, that, that. And then getting to meet with all these amazing folks in the industry. I mean, it, we've come full circle, and I think we're seeing now both sides of it. And this is how we want to educate our spouses and veterans that we hire as well. So, I mean, these folks that work with us are going to get the best of both worlds, right? So, but to be honest, another reason in coming into this is we have to address the problem of military spouse unemployment. Pre-pandemic numbers, right? Pre-pandemic numbers, military spouse unemployment, 24%. Unemployment, 26%. When I talk about my career being a jungle gym, it's because I had to jump off the ladder and start over each time, mm -hmm. you know? So what better way than to hire military spouses. And, and Isabel coined this one. She said, we can be part of their journey at one military installation, or as we expand, because we plan to be in every installation across this country, they can be the journey um, with us. We can be their full on journey. Love it. Because we want to build our company in a way that supports our spouses with the flexible work, scheduling. We recognize the military member, they always take priority, right? Who has to take time off or who has to take a back seat because the service member takes priority. So we want to support that because we get it. Um, I, mean, I guess bottom line, I think on PCS grade, your guys' site says we are a community, a military community mm -hmm. and a military family that takes care of our own. And, and I love that. It is so true. Heck yeah. And, and I mean, like, here's the thing. And, and, and a lot of that is derived from, from, um, you know, like it, when, when it hits the fan, the military cannot always take care of you. Bottom line, that's it. But the military family can take care of the military family. Mm -hmm. Like we're doing right here. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, that's, and that's awesome. So, um, and just for anybody who's watching, just FYI, we see I see your questions, and we're definitely going to get to them probably closer towards the end. Um, and hey to everybody who's signing in. Say hey. Throw up the love button if you're doing it from mobile. <laughs> yep, yep. And if you're on the replay, let us know, and we will hit you up too. Um, so now being on both sides of the fence, uh, military, family, and now in the moving industry, um, what is it that you want family to families to know about the process or the backside that they might not understand? Because like, I'm, I'm going to be real. We don't know how the sausage is made and there's a lot of probably <laughs> aha moments that you can provide. So, so what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of my jobs is to take the pulse of, of the industry, what is presently happening, to continue to sort of figure out what it is that we need to focus on when it comes to um, training. Wendy mentioned ethics classes. Um, I think it's important that folks understand that you do have to advocate for yourself first. 
you know, before you're going to bring in an additional person to help advocate for your particular issue, have you gone down all the lanes to determine that you're doing the exact thing that you need to be doing so that you get the end result that you want? Um, packing trash, right? We know on our end that those are the horror stories right, that we that we hear. Um, but on the on the agents' end, um, they they can meet us with just as many stories of folks not advocating for for themselves. And so when movers come into your home, you have to be prepared. You get typically someone from your local transportation office is going to come in, give you a move counseling. You're going to know that you got to take everything off the walls. You're going to know that you need to um, make sure that the dishes are, are done and clean and, and the house is prepared for that team to come in. Um, what Logs and Mill Moves would like to see is a Logs and Mill Move team arrive. And we understand that, that things happen. Right, and we're empathetic to what the what the family is going through, um, but it is helpful when the family has already done all that advocating for themselves and that they've they finally prepped. So that's that's one of the ways that I think um, we'll get to the sausage in a second. But that's one of the things that I think families, you know, we have a responsibility to do that. Now, the big question, right? The big question is always, you know, I, the movers came in, I saw them pack everything, um, they wrapped all my furniture, and um, I, I did some storage in transit because I went on leave and then I came, my house wasn't ready, went storage in transit again, uh, but then it was delivered and my my chairs are broken and my dining table is destroyed. I don't understand. Well, part of the sausage is that, and and what Megan's doing is gonna help, I think this with the, with the one transportation, you know, one ring to rule them all. You can tell I'm a fan. Um, <laughs> What that's going to do is it's going to create, it's going to elevate some of those standards, right, that we're talking about. So right now in the industry, your stuff will get picked up by a driver. That driver owns those blankets that are going on on your stuff, right? And then he's delivering it to another state into storage and transit. He's not going to leave his blankets there. He's going to take his blankets off your stuff. And the storage unit is going to rewrap that stuff and it's going to sit there. And they're going to rewrap it and whatever crew is available to do it is going to do it. You've never met this crew. You never, you saw the crew that was at your house. That's the last time that there's going to be three or four other crews that are going to touch your things and unwrap them and rewrap them. Because let's say then another driver comes and picks up from that storage unit. They're going to unwrap those blankets. They're going to rewrap them with that driver is going to rewrap it with his stuff. And then he's going to take it to your house. So now your, your items, and that's if you just had storage and transit at one location. Let's say you're leaving A and you have SIT at A, then your stuff is line hauled, then you had F SIT at B, right? And then there's an issue with your moving. It's, it sits in truck. I mean, there's all kinds of variables that play into the fact that you think you saw it happen one way, but in between that, all of the brokering that happened in between that um, affects that end user outcome, what it is that your furniture looks like on the tail end. Now you take, you want to incre increase the potential for damage. Now we're talking about the variable of peak season. So you're not the guy who's moving in early mm -hmm. April, you're the guy who's moving mid July or August, right? The beginning of August. Um, we know that the past a certain number is when, when claims will move exponentially up, right? Um, so, that's the sausage. That's a little bit of what happens. Wendy talked about um, bodies, right? So the need for an increase in capacity. That's the other end. The other end is, and we've already talked about it, but I just want to hit it because I want spouses to know that we really want them to come and seek us out. And especially those spouses who are looking for opportunities that look like substitute teaching. I know every installation I go to, people are, are ready and submitting resumes because they want to substitute teach for two reasons because it's a way to earn additional income as they work through other programs, as they're um, getting doing their MyCAA stuff and they're getting certifications. They want to do a little bit of work here and there. Um, this model will support that. This model will support eventually folks, even now, folks who want part-time and full-time employment in the way that they want it, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or only Tuesday, Thursday, or I'm available any day of the week. Um, but what we're, the other behind the scenes, right, get, bringing it full circle, is the fact that there just aren't enough bodies. And so that's why there's a thirst for what it is that we're doing, because we help those agents, number one, primarily solve that problem, while at the same time solve the problems that we see in the community, which is elevating the experience and providing those opportunities for spouses. Okay, I'm just going to backtrack because I'm, I'm going to go backtrack on the sausage really quick because I just <laughs> have a question. I just have a follow-up question. Because mm -hmm. I just have to know, because I wouldn't have even thought about it. If let's take your scenario, like if my stuff is being moved from the mo the mover's going to take his blanket because that's his. 
And then somebody else is responsible for wrapping it back up and it's if it's in storage and it's back and forth and back and forth. Who is ultimately responsible for breaking my crap? Who has to pay for it? Like that who, and that, Megan, that, I'm assuming Megan will have an answer to that because the claim. Megan, what the heck? <laughs> In that case, so it's, it, there's, it's a little weird. So you, you file your claim with your TSP, your transportation service provider on DPS, as you would any, as you would always. Um, they usually send a claims inspector out to, to verify your damage, to see if anything can be repaired, see what has to be replaced, um, to see how bad things are. That transportation service provider, your TSP, it is then their responsibility to kind of determine where in the process did that damage happen. Did it happen, you know, in transit? Did it happen because it was a poor pack job? You know, where in the process did it happen? That TSP, they'll pay you on your claim, but they'll go recoup some of that money from the driver, from the storage facility, from the local agent, um, for wherever they determined that that damage had happened at. So you don't see that side of it. You only see that I claim my damage with my TSP and my TSP will either repair or pay me for that item. Thank you for that another link in that sausage chain. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So. So you guys focus a lot with, with the military community, with hiring veterans, hiring spouses. So right now, where is Logs and Mill Moves located at if people are interested in joining your team? And what other benefits have we not already discussed is there to being a part of your team? Yeah. Right now, we have strategically decided to place ourselves at Fort Stewart, Georgia and Fort Bragg, North Carolina because we've linked up with an awesome agent who is mentoring us, who's grown up in the, in, the, in the moving industry. And so those are the two places where we're going to start. We're getting our toes wet. We're learning a lot here. So we want to, we want to learn more about the industry before we expand. I mean, this is a small chunk of the pie. We want eventually yeah. to move into loading, to warehousing, to line haul, to all the things. And, and then get our reputation solid this season and gain that experience. And whoever that GHC winner is, we're here. Um, that, <laughs> Hi. We want to, we want to, these. yeah, we want to talk to, we want to talk to them and we want to align with them. That's, that's the big goal. We want to subcontract through them. We want to be in every military installation because we know the labor is there. We know the trainings out there. We know the qualities out there and the benefits for our spouses is like we, we, we touched on is that, that flexible work. We're going to pay well because when you pay well, you get quality too, right? Mm -hmm. We want to pay well. Um, and, and we want them to have the ability to move their work. I mean, with growth comes all the other bigger things, right? You need an HR, you need a finance, you need uh, regional managers, all those things. And we want to employ our spouses and veterans to do that. Also, they'll have awesome bosses. <laughs> so, yeah, one, one of the things... One of the things we say is you don't build a, a pyramid from the top down, right? So we're really, we're building this pyramid from the bottom up. We wanted to get in at that at that base level because up at the top, you, you don't see a lot of times what trickles down to the bottom. And at the very bottom, there was this thirst from the agents for additional trained personnel that we want to solve. Um, but we want those sp the spouses who, and the veterans, and even any of our local partners, you know, local workforce employment partners, um, who get in to know that log ML moves as we expand, like Wendy said, those opportunities are going to open up for other types of jobs. And then Wendy, did you want to elaborate on uh, the franchising? Yeah, so we have a lot of we have a we have a grand vision for this and and a lot of big goals. But one of the ultimate things is providing franchising opportunities. I mean, our our model is actually quite brilliant, right? We chain, we train five folks at Fort Stewart and guess what? They're gonna get orders and they're gonna move to probably five different locations. Guess who's starting our company in those locations? Those people. And what we want to do to help further them and help to, to give them their own businesses is provide franchising opportunities eventually. So they'll go out and they'll go find their own teams and then they'll begin to provide these packing services with these franchise opportunities. And then last also, goodness, we talked about the industry and we've spoken to some great people there, but I mean, our community is fantastic. Megan was one of the very first people I spoke to. My husband was actually her, her, um, her, her instructor for 
Transportation Basic Officer course. Talking about family in our community and keeping it within the family. That's, yeah. So Wendy's husband, as she said, was my instructor back at Transportation uh, Officer course back at Fort Eustis many, many years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. And you know what? That just goes to show to all my peeps out there, okay, we've all had those neighbors or that spouse Mm -hmm. or, you know, that we just can't even with sometimes. But no matter who it is, no matter what the situation, you will at some point in your military career run into that person again just because you don't want to. Or maybe because (laughs) you do. I don't know. But either way, this is the exact reason why you always keep those relationships up relationships up and never burn bridges because these are opportunities that are actually happening in real time because they they had that connection already they, you know and um and look what's happening you're benefiting from it our audience is benefiting from it i know friendship is benefiting from it i'm telling you don't burn bridges, y'all. it could go south so fast okay yeah. True. And, and we have we have military spouses doing incredible things and starting incredible businesses. Uh, I, will, I have to give a shout out to Cece Gallagher, who started the Stressless PCS kit. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've been talking with her because we want her stickers on our boxes. I, I mean, how much help is that for our military families if we're offering that that as well? And then people that are, are doing organization work in homes or cleaning services, those things. We want to expand and partner with all those folks as well. Um, the support that we've had really is is phenomenal. And the people just raising their hands, even my husband's former battalion commander's wife reached out to me who does venture capitalism. and was like, let's meet and let's find a way to, to, to do more for you so cool. uh, during a pandemic. I mean, <laughs> what you say is it's so true. Those relationships yeah. matter. And I have to thank our community out there for the incredible support that they have given us. And also, if we have some of our, our folks that we're bringing on board with us, I have to give a shout out to them for Logs and Mill Moves fam, because we are bringing on some great folks. I mean, people, our military families will be lucky to have them in their homes. So, yeah. That is awesome. And, oh, and, it's, and it's, go ahead. Last one. Um, Brad <laughs> and Stuart too, since we're getting our folks, we're launching July 15th. If, if they're doing PPMs and need help packing, um, yeah, we we are happy to, to help on, in that realm as well. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Word. You heard it. You heard it here. Okay, we're going to take some of these questions here right quick. Um, okay, this one I think is going to be for Megan. Um, hey, we're supposed to – hey, Stevie, we're supposed to leave in July, July 15th, but still have no word for the HHG. What can I do? So contact your local transportation office. Uh, If you get on DPS, you should be able to see the status of your move, if it's been offered, if it's pending. Um, You know, if it has been offered and maybe you just didn't get the DPS email for some reason, uh, you can see what TSP you're assigned on DPS. If you've got nothing listed on there, reach out to your local transportation office, follow up with them to make sure that they are tracking your move and that everything is good to go for it. Um, And they'll help get you squared away with what you need then word um and then so we just we do have some shout outs here um let's see trish um hey trish uh ha- said interesting perspective and informative to see the other side of moving so that is appreciated because we don't often think about again how that sausage is made <laughs> and then you end up on the other side of the fence and you're like hold up a minute <laughs> Wait one minute. <laughs> what had happened was, you know, <laughs> and so, so that's, you know, that's, that's really, um, that's really key. I mean, honestly, I think that, that we all need to have grace in these types of situations, especially during COVID. And I think that this is going to help people look at their movers a little bit differently. Um, maybe not jump to conclusions as quickly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. If I may, uh, the word oh. that I like to use is allies. We do, and I know Megan knows this, we have a ton of allies um, in the industry. There are, everyone that we've talked to that our consultant has connected us with, they are incredible individuals. They are working really hard. Um, but 
sometimes there, there isn't, they, they didn't have the idea for the valve release, right? And so that's where Wendy and I come in. Like we are that valve release. We're gonna help this particular situation and they are really ready for it. But but we don't wanna lose the fact that we do have allies in the industry. Megan's you know one of our number one allies working to sort of talk through those pieces and provide that communication. Uh, but I don't want that to get lost. So I'm really glad that folks are, are understanding. I'm glad that you totally get that. Um, because it's important. It isn't all. It isn't always so one-sided, as one-sided as we think. My dad always said that there's three sides to every story. Um, this side, this side, and then what actually happened. Um, <laughs> which, so, so in that case, it's great to remain objective, right? Um, so actually, mm -hmm. so really quick, I, I have. Um, where can people find you? We're going to drop out all these links, all these resources. And we're going to be dropping into the comment section for all of our audience. Um, so what, where can people find you, um, whether it's social media or, or the, your website? Um, and, and also, what if people just have questions afterwards? Can they just, what if, a, what if there's a mill spouse watching right now that's like, I want in on that. What's happening? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a presence on Facebook. We're Log Some Mill Moves on Facebook. And then they can find us at uh, www.logsomemillmoves.com. So that's our website, logsomemillmoves.com. They can send an inquiry at the bottom of the page um, or just hit us up on Facebook. Go to the Log Some Mill Moves page and drop your question there or shoot us a, a message there and uh, we'll, get, we'll get back with you. Awesome. And before we go, do you have any parting words of encouragement to our fellow military and veteran community um, as it pertains to where you were and where you are now? I, I mean, I would just tell them right, right now, use your resources. I mean, you guys are putting out incredible information right now. Um, Megan on her PCS page has unit tabs, all of her her files. I mean, all those things are so helpful. I, you said, I think before we started, knowledge is power, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that's, it's been an evolution for us in learning from where we first started, from why are they packing our trash to maybe I need to take out my trash. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and, and, and be advocates for yourself. Way to reframe yeah. that, by the way. I yeah. like that. It, it's, yeah. I was the same way. I was the same way. Why did they pack my trash? Well, Wendy, you probably should have taken out your trash. <laughs> But that we, you know, um, surely they won't pack our trash like surely you know like they'll realize yeah. it's not but then it's like you know as, as our move coordinators have told us like if it is sitting out they will pack it if yeah. you don't want it packed you need to take it somewhere else and it's just like okay it, well they gotta it, pack the basket right yeah <laughs> part, of, part of that sausage is that they're trained to not question these things right the last thing that you want is somebody coming in and going, well, you did, did it, did it, you want this, you want this, you want this. Um, people will feel judged very quickly. And so that's yeah. part of their training, right? They're, you're not asking questions, mm -hmm. you're packing the things that they own. Because I have seen everything on, on some of the internal pages um, in terms of what, what people are, what people pack. Um, but just to, 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 to get back to your point, um, like Wendy said, number one, you advocate um, for yourself. My biggest advice for any spouse is find your ride or die early. Find that gal that is like your gal early, right? And so that you always have that buddy that you can call when you're really in it and you need help. You don't need a thousand friends. You, you need that one that's going to bring you the soup when you got strep throat. That's a true story for me. Um, and then uh, the last thing, it was, it was find your ride or die. Um, oh, man, it just escaped me. <laughs> like it was okay, advocate. I just need to advocate tell the audience yourself. right now, it is, it is, okay, so... Um, Isabel is actually in South Korea, where it is currently <laughs> oh zero four forty eight in the a.m. <laughs> yeah, on purpose. Oh. And that's why I'm so happy that you're here. <laughs> I remember the last thing is is uh, take care of your bandwidth. You know, you only have so much of yourself to give, and you don't have to volunteer at every single thing. Volunteers are fantastic, but if it's not also supporting your own military family, your nuclear family, you do need to, you advocate for yourself that way too. You know, take care of yourself, take a yoga class. I'm, a, I'm an advocate for yoga. Um, don't give away more than you have to give away. Keep your cup full and uh, definitely read. Like Wendy said, get use the resources at your disposal. But for me, it's read. The book that I recommend, The Anatomy of Peace, 
helps you sort of really learn how to communicate with other human beings. And at the end of the day, what else is there, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. If you can't communicate with somebody, you might as well just zip it. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of communication, again, uh, any comments, any questions, and all of the links will be dropped below of everything that we talked about today. Um, I'm really excited for our Oconos peeps to see this because I want them to know that they have a fellow Oconos person who came on just for them to. Um, which is awesome. I still can't get over how stupid 30 early it is right now. <laughs> I just can't even. Yeah, that's outside. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I can't, right. can't pump freeze. Like your spouse should be walking behind you soon on his way to PT or something. Right. Like, yes. hi so he, he was flying. He actually uh, okay. came in, I think at midnight, he had a night flight last night. Uh, we're part of the aviation community. We love it. It's, it's, it's small. We, you know, Pete's been doing this for a little while. Um, yeah, we love the military. I know Wendy's family is the same way. Like we, we are, we're not the, you know, we're all jingoistic, right? But we are, we love b being servants, and um, mm -hmm. especially for our, our greater American, you know, uh, civilians are, are, you know, the folks that support us pay pay the taxes, right? To pay the salary, pay our salaries. Yep. yep. Yeah. All right. Well, to our audience um, and to our guests, first, let me thank you both for being on. And to our audience, let me tell you, if you have any questions for these lovely ladies, we can get you those answers because we're going to stay in touch. They're kind of not going to get rid of us now because that's what happens when you come <laughs> on the show. Um, and until next time, oh, next week, next week's a big one. We're going to have Transcom back on. That's right. You heard me. They're going to do us a, a, a favor and um, kind of walk us through move that, um Move.mil, because, you know, sometimes we I need it broken down Barney style. No about y'all, but <laughs> it works for me. But until then, this too shall PCS. Bye, everyone. Bye.